Hi, it's Dr. Games, and welcome to my next installation in this uh, four-part series of how do we create a DVD with all the bells and whistles and trappings, including subtitles and closed captions. So the next, in the initial video, last video, we showed how to convert an MP4 into an appropriate usable container slash format for a DVD. On this one, we're going to talk about how do we create the menus and the subtitles. So I wanted to show you again, this is a, just a very basic menu. You don't have to do anything. Of course, it doesn't leave you many options either. You basically click and drag things into it and it will show up with this little bit of a preview and you can use the controls to move between the however many videos you have and that's about it. There's no option to put subtitles in or anything else. So if you want to put subtitles in, uh, there's a couple things that you want to do. So first thing we're going to do is we'll, we'll go to subtitle edit and we've got to get the subtitles into a format that various programs can use. Now if you look at the uh, the Mythica guys were nice in that they sent us the SRT version of the subtitles. Uh, and there are a lot of programs that use the SRT version of subtitles. Um, that's kind of the standard format. Um, I use uh, Sony Vegas and DVD Architect and they use a, uh, a different format. So what I do when I when I, I'll take an SRT and I can just open them and this is with subtitle edit which is just an amazing program. And then do a save as and the particular one you want is you want to go down to Sony DV Architect with line numbers. That's the format you want and you output that and then it's good to go. Um, that will work in that will work in Sony DVD Architect. Uh, there's a couple things that you may as you go through and it it uh, tries to put the subtitles in you sometimes get an error it's almost always because the lines are too long and you can just go to tools and do split long lines and if there were any they would show up there you click OK and that's that so uh, we'll and we'll come back to we'll come back to subtitle edit in a little bit but I wanted to show you how that that worked so that's that's how we generate the subtitles. We actually had the subtitles. Uh, you can use this if you want. Um, if you were interested in uh, actually putting in the subtitles yourself, and I have done that from time to time, um, I can. I, I'll show that in another video. I'll show you how to actually generate your subtitles from scratch. Uh, but what I did then is I wanted to produce some menus. So initially, I did this. I have a, a picture, and I'll just show you that. Uh, we'll just show that by itself. And this picture is a, a PNG file with a transparent background that just has the icon for the button as well as the title on that. And then underneath what I did is I took some clips from the movie and put them together. And you can see the, what that what that looks like. Uh, this is uh, I, I pretty much stole this idea directly from some of the other commercially produced DVDs that are out there, and you can see it looks pretty nice. And given that as a backdrop, I brought that into DVD Architect. Now I, I'm going to make one comment. Um, there's also a there's a Sony DVD Architect Pro 6 and I would tell you that the only difference between 5.2 and 6 is that 6 lets you do stereoscopic uh, Blu-ray um, but aside from that it's got exactly the same features and 5.2 is a very robust very quick excellent program and I would tell you that my experience with 6 are that it it does give you the product at the other end, but it's a little buggy and it also takes about five times as long. 
and I've been to all the online forums, etc. And no one has been able to explain why that's true, so I just don't use that. So, coming here, what I did is this is our this is our main menu, and you want to go up here into properties when you first start off. Uh, I know that this file is going to be a dual-sided DVD, and that's what that is. Uh, 4.7 is the single-sided. This is one of those little mini DVDs. Sometimes you get those as uh, if you go to a convention or something, they might hand those out. They're kind of cool. Um, we know that we're using MPEG format for it. We, this is the kind of standard uh, 8 megabits per second. Aspect ratio is uh, for widescreen. And remember we talked about 720 by 4. This is the standard frame rate, 29.97. Um, although um, in this particular case, that's all you can pick. Although it's it's actually true that a DVD can run a variety of formats, including cinematic, which is 24 uh, and 25, etc. And remember that we're using Dolby, which is the AC3, and at 192. So that's all good to go. Um, you don't really need to mess with any of the rest of this stuff. Okay, so initially what happened is I, uh, I hit Control F. That allows me to bring the file in. It would show up here and then I just drag and drop it back to where I want it to be. And now at this point I'm back at this menu and what I did is, and let's pick a place where you can actually see it, I inserted a empty button and I put it around that icon. I put it around that icon. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what its characteristics are. You move it around with this particular button and you resize it to fit how you want it here. Um, notice that uh, for highlight uh, you can pick a variety of things. I put underline so that you could see through it. And then this is the media, that's the, uh, well, I'm sorry, that's the media for that. But uh, let's go to the background for the menu. Background for that, you'll notice that I put in this uh, title background and for the audio I put in that as well. So now we've got that set up and let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a, an actual look at the movie. So when it starts off, uh, it will initially when you import it, it's going it, to an MPEG. It's going to have the video and the audio set up, and that was just fine again because we did this in such a way that it was going to be usable by this program. One note that's very very important when you set this up is uh, it initially it uh, will not come in with any of the chapter markings. In this particular case, when you bring these. Uh, when you bring an MPEG in, it's not going to have the chapter markings. Uh, that's not so critical if you have a single-sided DVD, but if you have a dual-sided, the program's going to look for one of these to break it, so that because it won't all fit on one side, on one layer rather, on, on one layer of it. So it's important to put these in. The way you do that, very simple. Just uh, go into an area, hit hit M, and it will put a marker in place. Um, so that's that. So one thing about subtitles is they might or might not actually line up. You could, there's a way to do that with subtitle edit. And again, we'll, we'll go through that in another video. Um, you can also do it if you wanted to in Sony Vegas, if you wanted to move the subtitles around there. But what I did honestly is I think the closer you get to the actual product, the better off you are. And so where I moved the subtitles around was here. I would uh, I'd just go in and highlight a, a block of them. I'd try to find where there was a reasonable logical break in the subtitles. I highlighted them. I made sure the first one was set up uh, by playing. And then I would go to one of the last couple and make sure they were lined up. And then I moved my way through. Now that this was the most time consuming part of this process. If you have subtitles, then probably the most time consuming thing is going to be getting them set up the right way. But initially it won't have the subtitle track. So what you're going to want to do is come up here, insert track, and you can insert subtitle track. It puts it in there. This will initially be blank. You right click on it 
and you'll go import subtitles uh, and we're not going to do that but it will uh, it allows you to bring in those uh, Sony DVD subs and that's that's where those will come in um, by the by once you get these all organized appropriately then right click on it and export them as well so that's important um, notice that you can set the track language here so and same thing for the audio uh, if you want you can have more than one language and more than one set of subtitles when we click that button uh, some of this will make a little more sense so when we go back to the button now notice what the actions are so I have it set up to go to that particular video which is this one it goes to the very first to the start of it uh, and then you it in this particular case I have it turning on the audio track one a lot of times it says no change which would go to one and subtitle track now it defaults by the way to uh, no subtitles but uh, since I'm not a spring chicken anymore I actually auto really appreciate having the subtitles auto instantiated and then auto activate means that if if it gets to the end of the sequence does it automatically instantiate that button uh, which leads to some really cool things and I can show you in uh, another video how you can set it to for example to play through a series of videos and then after a certain counter will come back to the beginning and play something else or you could have it randomly choose which videos it's going to play so it adds a little variety you could even get this to play games etc using some of the uh, the programming capabilities the, these DVD scripts but uh, we're not going to do that here so once you got it all ready to go uh, it gives you two previews you can preview the current in this case would be the menu you can preview the disk so then once you're all ready you go here to make DVD you go to uh, if you you could there's three options you can prepare it which just produces the, the base files for it you burn it which prepares and burns or again you can do the DDB master which was the files you would send to a mastering facility in our case we put uh, this is where it would have gone it goes through it gives you a couple warnings and then remember I talked about how it would check the subtitles and menus to make sure what it's doing is it's making sure that everything will fit nicely within the borders etc on the screen and uh, you're not going to have any overflow or anything else so it's it's doing checking it's doing some what uh, my old friend Chris Jardine would call idiot checking in this particular case they're all good to go if we click finish it would produce that video and if the MPEGs properly produced it will actually burn an entire two-hour video in less than five minutes no kidding I mean not burn it I'm sorry it will prepare the files in less than five minutes so pretty remarkable so that is how you get it in there with the subtitles etc one thing I guess I could show you is let's go back to this main menu I'm gonna do this from scratch right now uh, you could have a separate menu if you wanted that you could get to from here by just doing a insert uh, submenu um, or you could put on here let's say that you're not like me and uh, and here if I wanted to put some text in here and let's say I could choose to put subtitles on or off say I want to make that a little bit different color so it stands out a little bit and then I'm gonna shrink this down so I could actually put in whether I wanted the subtitles on or off I will insert a empty button I will change the button style to text only and we'll say on oops gotta edit the text uh, so that's you can either hit F2 or do that so we'll do on and I'll make that green for go with that put it off the side so it's underneath um, and the destination in this particular case is just going to be our menu so it comes back here but what I'll do is I'll have it set the uh, on now if I'm going to do that I also need to set this to no change 
and then I will uh, I can either duplicate it or I can do a new one I'll just show you how to do a new one so I go back here to insert empty button I'm gonna right click change it to text only I'm gonna I'm gonna hit F2 I'm gonna use the shortcut I talked about I'm gonna put off uh, I'm gonna change this to red just because people more associate that with uh, with off oops and there we go I'll put this over here I actually might want to move all these up just a smidge so they're not sometimes it gets touchy about that all right so for the off button for my actions I'm gonna have it link again back to the menu but for subtitle track I'm gonna turn it to off and then the last thing you have to do once you put these extra buttons on is you want to uh, ensure that you want to ensure that these all go to the right places so if I move the thing up and down I want it to do that uh, if I move it side to side, I'd like to have it come over here. Um, and from this one, uh, I guess I'll have two going up and two going this way. Oops, there we go. Oh, it, it is, but it's not showing up because it's down below. And then same thing with this. We'll have the up and down go here. And I'll have the side to side going to this. And I'll, I'm just going to demo this for you so you can see. So I'm just going to preview the uh, current. And now, if I notice that this has got the, uh, it's invisible right now, but eventually that's going to show up. And I can move it over here and I can have the subtitles on or off or etc. So uh, that's, uh, that is it for this video. Again, I can burn that, and that's kind of a cool thing that it would do. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.